All right, so this is topic eight, force, mass, momentum. Look at my notes here, it's seven pages long. So seven pages isn't an awful lot, but there is quite a lot of maths equations and there's quite a lot going on here. So this video could go long. So what I have here is I have a timer set in front of me. Uh, so I'll try and get it done. If I don't get it done in 20 minutes, I'll stop the video at 20 minutes and make a part two. Okay, so this could be a two part video um, and it might be the same for uh, pressure, gravity and moments. And then, then that's it. Um, we just have to do uh, symptomatic motion and circular motion. So force, mass, momentum. There's three things going on in this. This kind of ties in after, and I know the numbering is a bit off. I would watch vectors and scalars first and then do the rest of it, but anyway. Uh, force, what is a force? A force is anything which causes an object to accelerate um, or change in velocity, basically, okay? Uh, when you push a block, this is junior circuit, guys, I'm gonna push, go through pretty quick. You push something forward, there's gonna be a bit of friction pushing it back, okay? All right. SI unit is the Newton, guys, okay? Mass, we did that in junior cert. The SI unit, guys, for, for mass is in kgs, so you have to convert everything to kgs. If they give it to you in grams, you have to convert to kgs, all right? So everything has to be in kgs in mass, all right? So what is a Newton? You do need to know this, this does get asked. A Newton is the force that gives a mass of one kg in acceleration of one meters per second. So, how can you remember that? Look at the equation, F equals MA. F equals MA. F is Newton, M is kg, and A is meters per second to the minus two, because that's an acceleration. No, oops, that should be um, a minus two there. Okay, apologies. So, uh, mass acceleration should be to the minus two. All right, so basically, if we want one Newton, then that means we have one kg multiplied by one meters per second. So one Newton is the force that gives a mass one kg in acceleration one meters per second to the minus two. There you go, that's how you remember it. Okay. And we'll, I'll come back to this down here in a minute. All right, weight. Again, this is junior cert, you should remember this from junior cert. What is weight? It's mass times acceleration to the gravity, W equals mg, that's what the G stands for, gravity, okay? Weight is a Newton, so it's SI unit is N. So, this is where the complication comes in. In everyday life, we d deal with kgs, um, or well, we, some people still use the American system of stone and pounds. You know, get with the times, guys. Metrics, kgs, all right? Uh, so kgs is the way it is, but weight is actually in newtons. Kg is mass, okay? So friction, friction is the force which opposes the relative motion between two objects, and so forth. So the first question here, very straightforward question. I'll fly through it there. Um, a force, with what force, F equals F is what we're looking for, gives a mass of 20 kgs, an acceleration of five meters per second to the minus two, F equals MA, which is 20 times five, so F, 100 newtons. Okay, so F equals 100 newtons. Problem two then, now, let me see. Oh, we have one, two, we have three problems here actually. Okay. So now this one is gonna pop in with a little bit of equations of motion again. So if you remember your equations of motion, we'll follow the format that I, I said to follow and you should be able to answer all of these, no problem. Okay, so write everything on the left hand side and then you answer the question. A mass of 10 kgs, has an initial velocity in a certain direction. A constant force is then applied to the body in the same direction for a time of 12 seconds. And they wanna find the acceleration, the final velocity, and the distance. All right, so the first thing we have to find is the acceleration. So go to your log tables. Can you find an equation that's missing A, but has two other values that we can use to find A? Easy enough. F, because A will therefore equal F over M. A equals 40 over 10. Done, so we have A. Next one. 
find the final velocity after 12 seconds. So we're looking for V. So is there any equation that you can find that is missing one letter that is V, has everything else? So V, U plus AT. Because we have U, which is 6, A, which is 4, and T, which is 12. So when you put all that in, you should end up with your V value of 54. Done. All right. And the last one then, the distance. And that's fairly straightforward. S equals UT plus a half. UT squared. Sorry, AT squared, not UT squared. Uh, we have U, which is, what did we say U was? 6. T, which is 12. A, which is 4. So your S should work out to be 300. And 60 meters. Done. And there you go. Okay, problem three. So there's actually three questions here. Four questions. Okay, there's a lot going on here. Um, do I have enough space? Mm. All right. So again, I might have to rub stuff out as I go. But again, you can just rewind the video back if you need to see it. So a force of 200 newtons. This gives an acceleration of 4 meters per second to the minus 2. What is the mass of the stone? Well, F equals MA. M equals F over A, which equals 200 over 4. The mass of our stone should be... Sorry, 2,000. Oh, there we go. I knew there was something wrong. I said, dang, that seems very small. There we go. So 2,000 divided by 4, which gives me 500 kgs. There we go. If the stone is initially at rest, so we have the start value, 0. And a force acts for a time of 20 seconds. Uh, find the velocity, so the final, the final velocity, V equals V, and the distance, S equals S. A water the force acting in the zone would then stop the stone. Okay, so that's a separate question. We're going to have to look at the end. All right, so I'm going to rub this out because I, I found M. Right here. Okay, so the first thing we're looking for here is find the final velocity. So what equation has one missing value in your log tables? That's the way to always look at physics. Find me the equation with one missing value. V, U, plus A, T. Because we have A, 4, and we have T, 20, and we have U, which is 0. So therefore, V equals 80 meters per second. Part 2. Uh, the distance traveled is very straightforward. Equation, lads, S, U, T, plus a half. A t squared. We have u, which is 0, so that's 0 there, and a half, 4 t squared. So our distance should work out to be 800 meters. So we have v, we have s. Now I'm going to have to rub all this out because I need all the space. I'm going to put those values on my left hand side here just so I will remember them. 80, 800. Okay, so that's the first two bits. Very straightforward. So now the last question there is what other force acting on its own would then stop the stone in 0 0.1 seconds. So if we look at this question here now, right? So we're going to stop. So what's our final velocity going to be here? Zero. And our time? 0 0.1. What's our initial velocity? Well, our initial velocity is 80 meters per second because we said that in the previous question there, we've discovered that after so many seconds. Because again, what we're saying here, okay, we've hit it with 2,000 newtons of force and it accelerated four meters per second. And then after 20 seconds, it's traveling at 80 meters per second. And then all of a sudden in one, 0 0.1 seconds, the stone has to, st or the object has to stop. Okay, it has to stop. So in other words, it has to go from 80 meters per second to zero. You see? So we're looking for F which we don't know. We have the mass, which we worked out earlier, is 500. So obviously we need to find first the acceleration because we're looking for force, all right? So here's the question. What other force? Well, that means we're looking for F 
equals m a. We have m, we have to find a. See, we have this, we don't have this. We gotta find a. So we have v equals 0, t equals 0 0.1, u equals 80. Is there any equation with a and all those three? There is. Again, log tables, find the equation, one missing value. v equals u plus a t. So a, v minus u over t. So a is going to equal minus 800 meters. Now, there's a minus there. Have we made a mistake? No. What does the minus mean? It means we are decelerating. Okay, so in physics, the minus means we're slowing down. The positive a means you're speeding up. So if you get a pl plus a, means you're getting faster. Minus a means you're slowing down. That's all. You can ignore that equation. You that, sorry, that symbol. Okay, so we can now ignore that minus. It just means it's decelerating. We knew that already. Okay, you can leave it in if you wish. If you did leave it in, you'd end up with a minus f value, which doesn't matter because that means it's, it's going in the opposite direction, so it's fine. Okay, so we have a equals 800. So now we sub all that back into our equation up above. F equals 5. What was F? 500, yeah. 500 times 800. F equals 400,000 newtons. There you go. And that's it. What time we want? So we've eight minutes left. And let me see, will I get momentum? Okay, so I'm going to do the start of momentum and then I will call a halt there and we'll do part two then. So momentum. The momentum of a body is its mass multiplied by its velocity. Okay, so P equals mv. Okay, so that's kind of the momentum. Remember that because we're going to be jumping into um, different types of momentums now in a second. We're going to be looking conservation of momentum, which is the big one. Okay. All right, so I just put that in there for the time being. Oops, that should be a rubber. A rubber. All right, now the three laws, three Newton's laws, you need to know all three. You need to know which is the first, which is the second, which is the third. And you need to be able to explain why the second is a special case. Okay, so you need to know them. Why? Sometimes they will say state Newton's first law or state Newton's third law. So the first, okay, every object will stay at rest or travel with a constant velocity unless something on the outside acts towards it, okay? So things in motion stay in motion, things at rest will stay at rest. It's kind of the easy way to think of it, okay? So for example, if I put a rock in the middle of a room, okay, and I sealed up the room and we didn't touch the room for a thousand years and you went back into that room, that rock would still be there, okay? The only way the rock would move is if an external force hit it. It's the same with in space. If you are in space and you fling an object, the object will keep moving forever because there's no friction in space. It'll keep moving forever unless something else acts in it, i.e. gravity or another object collides with it, etc. Okay? Things in motion will stay in motion. Things at rest will stay at rest unless an external force acts in it. Newton's second law. The rate of change of an object's momentum is directly proportional to the force which caused it and goes in the direction of said force. Okay? So when an object's momentum is changing, in other words, it's mass times velocity, when it changes, it, the change is directly proportional to the force. In other words, if a ball is coming towards you and you kick that ball as hard as you can, it'll go back in the opposite direction to which it came. Its momentum now changes back the other way. Whereas if you barely touch the ball, chances are it's not gonna bounce back in the opposite direction, but it'll probably stop and fall, okay? So momentum is directly proportional to the force that causes it and goes in the direction of that force. And then Newton's third law. When every action has an equal but opposite reaction is the correct way to think of it, okay? So every action has an equal but opposite reaction. However, this is the correct way to say it. When body A exerts a force on body B, body B exerts a force in equal magnitude but opposite direction, okay? If I can get the pencil to pop up. So when A exerts a force on B, Oh, that's right. So when A exerts a force on B, B exerts a force in equal magnitude but opposite on A. All right, reaction equal but opposite reaction. 
Okay, that's kind of what it's saying there. So the last thing I'm gonna do in this video, guys, is talk you through why Newton's second law is a special case, this equation here. Okay, so, uh, where are we? So what you're gonna be asked is prove why f equals ma, or prove why Newton's second law is a special case, or any, any reason why that. They can ask you this, this is a derivation. Okay, start with this line here. Force is proportional to, not equal to, Final minus initial divided by time taken. In other words, the force applied, think of the equation, or the derivation, the, the definition, sorry, okay? The rate of change of an object's momentum is directly proportional to the force which caused it, okay? In other words, F is directly proportional to the change in momentum, mv, okay? All right, now the rate of change means that there's a time involved as well. You see, rate of change means time. So F is proportional to mv over t, all right? Now, of course, it is the rate of change, so your change in momentum, which means your final minus, oops, your final minus your initial. Hence why we end up with mv minus mu over t, okay? That's where that comes from. Now, mv minus mu over t. So what we need is we need to get this proportionality gone, make it equal to, so we introduce the constant k. All right, the constant here being the object that's been moved, basically. Okay, so if you change the object, you change everything else, but we keep the object constant. So everything else stays constant, basically. Whenever you bring in a constant, everything stays constant, okay? All right, that's the idea. All right, so then, therefore, if everything is the same, then everything equals one. They can't see each other off, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's why we can get rid of K here as well. Pretty quick, all right? Now, go to your log tables. We said earlier, then acceleration is equal to V minus U over T. You see, V minus U over T. So therefore F equals KMA. Now, what do we say, if you want to officially get rid of K the correct way, one Newton gives one kg an acceleration of one meters per second. So therefore, if we have F equals KMA, that means one equals K times one times one, which means K equals one. So therefore we can get rid of K, all right? All right, now, um, I think sometimes in the max scheme, they will allow you to just say k equals 1 be dominant, but that's kind of where the, the logic comes from. All right, so therefore, f equals ma, you're done. That's it. So start, initial, final minus initial divided by time taken, which is mv over mv minus mu. m is constant for both, so you take that outside. You bring in your constant k, you say a equals v minus u over t, uh, therefore, f equals kma, k equals 1, f equals ma, you're done. You're finished. All right. And then, of course, sometimes it can help in a question uh, if you're given, so it's kind of a handy to know, but won't make, you know, you don't need to know it, but it's handy to know, is sometimes a question will give you M, V, U, and T and ask you to find F. And you'd say, well, F equals M, A. So instead of going A equals V minus U over T, and then you find your A value and you sub that in here, you can in future, use this equation. It's not a log table. It's F equals mv minus mu over t. Gets you the same thing. All you're basically doing is you're skipping this step, v minus u over t. You're subbing that in for a. That's all you're doing. Okay? So it's a simple thing to have. Not the end of the world. If you don't do it, you can still find a and sub it in, but it just cuts the time. Okay, so that's the end of part one of this video. I'll do part two now in a second. Uh, part two, we have one, two, three, four, five, six six questions to do and one extra topic, okay?